everyone and welcome back to my channel. Uh, this video is going to be another book review and the book that I am going to be discussing in this video is My Grandmother Asked Me to Tell You She's Sorry by Frederick Backman. This book was sent to me for free to give an honest review. Grace over at Loving Den Books organizes all of this and so you sign up to be a host for booktube tours and she will send out emails like all the time um, saying to sign up to be a host for a certain book and so if you sign up and are accepted to be a host then you can sign up to be a host for all these different books and they will send you a book in this case it was this one um, and you read it and you review it and you do a video and you do optionals and promotions like on your Instagram or anything else like that and it's just a really fun and cool way to get books to get free books um to read more books to spread inf more like information about newer authors about books that are next necessarily like mainstream so it's just a really every everybody wins in this situation if you would like to learn more about this whole booktube tour things i have links to everything down below and you can even win a copy of this book with a link that is in my description. <laughs> Alright so I'm just gonna go ahead and dive into my book review. So I got the email to sign up to be a host for this book and the first thing that I noticed was how much I loved this cover. Here's a close-up of it and it's just it's so calming in a sense. I really like the font which is funny because there's like a whole thing about the font in this book with the main character's dad and I saw like a little girl she's holding a letter and there's a dog and I just really love the cover. So to kind of sum up the plot of this book, it is about a little girl and her name is Elsa and she doesn't really have any friends. She's kind of weird in like society's um, set of rules um, and her best friend is her grandmother. Her grandmother is her hero. She adores her grandmother. Her, gran her grandma is so funny because she's like super crazy. And so unfortunately one day Elsa's grandmother passes away from cancer and she and Elsa is left with all of these letters that she needs to distribute to all these different people that live like in their um the where they in like the apartment areas of where they live. So she has to basically like go on this journey to deliver all of these letters and she basically just learns a bunch of things throughout the throughout this book and throughout all of her experience she learns more about her grandmother's past she learns more about her mother's past she learns more about all the people's past that live around her because all of like the main kind of characters in this book they all live right next to they're all like neighbors but they're all like connected somehow they all have Elsa's grandmother in common. So Elsa's grandmother has something to do with everybody that lives in these apartments and so Elsa is just learning about all of these different people and how like what they had to do with her grandmother. Alright so if you've seen any of my book reviews what I like to do is I like to read the book obviously and then put a lot of tabs in there and kind of just like go over the tabs as I um like go through the book or else I would sit here and ramble for like three hours because I'm like that so this is a way for me to contain myself. So even though this is a way for me to try and like organize my thoughts these videos are always still like all over the place so just bear with me. So the first note that I have here is on page 25 and um, it's talking about Elsa's mom so her mom and her father are divorced and her mom is I don't I don't think they ever specified if she was remarried but she's with somebody else and she is also pregnant. So there isn't really any bad blood like between her mom and her dad. Um, they're just divorced and she lives um, mostly, I, technically with her mom, but like she's always with her grandmother. So she like lives mostly with her granny. And then she goes and visits her dad and his new wife, um, Lisette, um, every like now and then. And it's so funny. So her mom is talking to, um, Elsa and the granny and she's like oh that we're gonna name the kid because they don't want to know if it's a boy or a girl until after the kid is born and so they're like oh we're gonna name it Elver if it's a boy and Elvira if it's a girl and so the first thing I thought when I read that I'm like really that sounds like the name of a character out of like Lord of the Rings and then sure enough they're like oh are they planning to send him to Mordor to destroy the ring or what I'm like <laughs> me and granny we're just on the same same brainwave there Alright, so the next little um, thing that I have here is on page 
47, and it's a quote that I really like. So his granny says, people who think slowly always accuse quick thinkers of concentration problems. Idiots can't understand that non-idiots are done with a thought and already moving on to the next before they they themselves have. That's why idiots are always so scared and aggressive because nothing scares idiots more than a smart girl. And I just love that. I was like, oh, granny. Okay, and so then Elsa as a character, I really, I really adore her. She's a seven-year-old kid going on eight as she says a million times throughout this book because little kids are always like a half or three quarters more than they really are which is really funny. So this little girl grew up with her grandmother who's like uh, always smoking and has like a mouth like a sailor and it's just she this is what she's grown up and this is what she knows so she talks like that and she's so sassy and she's so feisty and it's so funny so there's one part where she gets in trouble at school because she's getting bullied a lot and so naturally you know when the victim goes the victim is the one that gets in trouble and so the bullies like get away with it and um something is happening and Elsa's just like snitches get stitches <laughs> I wrote a note here I'm like she's so bad and one thing that I absolutely adored about this book was all of the Harry Potter references. So Elsa, this little girl is obsessed with Harry Potter and like, same. <laughs> Literally every other page has a Harry Potter reference. So if you like Harry Potter, then you will love this book and you will love Elsa. She starts talking about Harry Potter in the beginning of the book and I'm just like, oh, that she really likes Harry Potter. That's really cute. But no, she is in love with him and she's in love with the story and she is obsessed with the books. And so she literally brings up Harry Potter like every single chance that she can get. And I'm just like, also, same. <laughs> so there's one part where um, she had to go to school without her Gryffindor scarf. So I um, guess she's a Gryffindor. Um, and there's like an instance where she's in getting in a fight with like this stupid little girl at her school and they're calling her scarf ugly and it's she's like the first time the scarf caught the girl's attention Elsa had simply assumed that the girl was a Slytherin <laughs> only after she smacked Elsa in the face ripped her scarf and thrown it in a toilet had Elsa grown conscious of the fact that this girl hadn't read Harry Potter after all she knew who he was of course everyone knows who Harry Potter is but she hadn't read the books she didn't even understand the basic symbolism of a Gryffindor scarf and while Elsa didn't want to be elitist or anything how could one be expected to reason with a person like that muggles I just I just loved it. There were so many references throughout this book. It's the best. Just one of the first letters that Elsa gives out is to a guy called the Monster. And so this guy, um, he was somebody that, oh, because I didn't mention this, because Granny, Elsa's grandmother, was a surgeon. She was a doctor. So the whole thing was that she would always be gone and she'd be in these other countries, like during wars and saving people. So there's a part where Elsa is like, um, kind of getting bullied again and so he comes and he basically saves her and it reminded me of like um to kill a mockingbird it, it gave me a whole like he gave me a total boo radley kind of feel and then on page 126 there's another quote that i really liked and it's um because not all monsters were monsters in the beginning some are monsters born of sorrow and so that was just another quote that like kind of makes you think of why people are the way that they are and why they act the way they do so it was just something else to think about all right so on page 142 i have another um another note here and it's about Elsa and her mom's relationship and so Elsa and her mom are very different but and they fight a lot but like they they always come to this certain understanding and but, um, they have a conversation which was so which was so funny after the scene where um Elsa gets out of the car because they're in traffic because this guy is honking at the mom and so Elsa gets out of the car in traffic and on the highway and starts smacking this guy's trunk not the trunk, the front of the car with a book, dents his car. And so a policeman comes and is like, what's happening? And then she's like, my mom is pregnant. He's like, is she in, like, in labor? And like, I guess the, the, the policeman doesn't like understand what's going on. So he takes them to the hospital. And so they're just waiting outside um, and having a conversation before like people come. And so they have like an understanding in the parking lot and it's just great. And they have a, they have a few more scenes like this that I really enjoyed. But I just really liked the... Um, the mother-daughter relationship. So another note I have here on page 211 is another um, Harry Potter thing. So there's a woman, um, I don't, they don't ever tell her her name, but she's the woman that wears the black skirt, the woman in the black skirt. So this woman is a therapist, or psychologist, psychotherapist, and um, when his granny was saving people, it, there was a tsunami somewhere and this woman lost her husband and her two boys. So she obviously, like serious emotional pain and she was distraught and so um 
Granny just took her home with her, and that woman came home the same day that Elsa was brought home from the hospital when she was born. And so it's not until after Elsa's grandmother dies that, you know, she goes to take her the letter, because she has one of the letters for her, and um, they have a conversation, and that's where, where Elsa learns, like, who she is and why, and, like, how she knew her grandmother. But it was really funny, because she goes into her office, and she's like, you have a lot of books here. Like, you, you got any, any Harry Potter? And so this woman's like, no... <laughs> But then it's really cute because there's a scene a few pages later, like in the next chapter, where they um they meet up again. And so she she's like, "Hey, I bought I bought the Harry Potter books yesterday, and I'm starting them um, because I know that they mean a lot to you." And I was just like, "That is so cute." Oh, and then there's this other character named Britt Marie who irritated who irritated me so much in the beginning of this book. And I was like, "I know that this author is going to do something to make me like." pity her, feel sorry for her, maybe even, even end up liking her at the end, and like a little bit towards the end. But geez, until then she was so annoying. Like we learned that um, since Elsa's grandmother was always away, that this is the woman that basically like raised um, Elsa's mother, but my god, she was so annoying. <laughs> and so there's one part at the end when they're, when her and where Britt Marie and Elsa are having a conversation, and there's just a quote that I like that um, Britt Marie says from, from some, Dr glass dr yeah glass i think and so the quote um that Britt marie is quoting it says we want to be loved quotes Britt marie failing that admired failing that feared failing that hated and despised at all costs we want to stir up some kind of feeling in others the soul abhors a vacuum at all costs it longs for contact and i just thought i like that quote oh my goodness okay and so the last little um thing here that i have is on page 349 and so, like I said in the beginning, um, Elsa's mom is pregnant. But finally, towards the end of the book, she um, ha has the baby. And it's so cute because the mom is like, oh, we decided, me and George, the, the dad, or the dad of the new baby, um, he, there, she's like, oh, that we um, decided on another name for the baby. And I think you're really going to like it. They named the baby Harry. They named the baby Harry after Harry Potter because Elsa loved Harry Potter so much. And so there's like a kind of quote that um, Elsa's grandmother used to say all the time that Elsa repeats at the end on page 366 and that, and it's getting better, it's going to be fine. And I think that's just, it's such a simple, like quote, it's, it's such a simple um few words of reassurance and it's just it still makes an impact and so just basically that you know it may be bad right now but it's gonna get better and it's getting better and it's gonna be fine and I just the one thing that I really loved about Elsa was that she didn't have any like friends her own age until the very end like in the last five pages she meets a friend named Alex at her school who's kind of weird like her and they become best friends which is great because she has a friend now one thing that I really loved is that she was surrounded by all of these broken adults and throughout the book she basically helps them heal like she she brings things up that they don't want to talk about she asks questions and she helps them like heal within themselves with relationships with the people that they love and it's just I loved it so yeah at the end of the day I gave this book a five out of five stars it was a little bit iffy at the beginning but the second half of the book was amazing and um it was it just it makes you think it's one of those books where it makes you think it's about a little seven-year-old but it makes you think. Definitely recommend it. Like I said, five out of five stars. It was wonderful. If you like Harry Potter, I think you're going to appreciate this book because this little girl is obsessed with Harry Potter. So if you like this, then you're going to like this. <laughs> right, but yeah, like I said at the beginning of this video, links to everything. If you want a free copy of this book, um, links to that down below, links to everything that you want. If you have any questions, go ahead and ask me. If you um, we're also part of the booktube tours because I know there was a whole bunch of people and you stumbled across my channel. Hello, first of all, let's talk about this if you want to talk about this. So please leave a comment um, down below and we can discuss it. But yeah, like I said, five out of five stars. I really, really ended up loving this book. And it, it's like I said, it's one of those that makes you think even after you finish it. So yeah, thank you all so much for watching my video. Like I said, please leave any comments down below about anything and everything. And I will see you in my next video. Bye.